Hello and welcome to the Maine College of Health Professions. I'm Professor Meredith Kendall. I teach in the nursing program here at MCHP. I teach in both the associate level and the bachelor level of the nursing program, and I'm the advisor to the bachelor level students. Here at MCHP, we have a model of servant leadership with a strong focus on the students. We offer strong advising support from the faculty and tutoring services. Peer tutoring is available. We have tutors from nearby Bates College and tutoring from our President Emerita, who served on the Maine State Board of Nursing and as such wrote questions for NCLEX, the National Licensure Examination for Nurses. For students to become a registered nurse, they graduate from an approved and accredited program and take the National License Licensure Examination called NCLEX. Our nursing program is approved by the Maine State Board of Nursing and is accredited by national accreditors including ASIN and Nietzsche. We are pursuing accreditation from CCNE from our RN to BSN program. Our pre-licensure program is crafted to prepare students to take the NCLEX. The content aligns with NCLEX content and we teach them additionally about study skills and test taking skills. MCHP started in 1891, the same year as a local hospital which was called at that time Central Maine General. At that time our our school was affiliated strongly with the hospital we were seen as another department of the hospital. The students lived in a wing of the hospital. The instructors were physicians from the local hospital. We're moving from that vocational task-oriented model to a more separate freestanding academic model. Our faculty are now nurses who are prepared with master's and doctoral degrees. Our clinical faculty are enrolled in bachelor's programs if they don't already have a bachelor's degree. Another model we're changing is the traditional classroom model of SAGE on the stage to guide on the side. We incorporate a lot of interactive activities with our lectures. In our RN to BSN program, we're adapting a model of standardized courses. We're working with an instructional designer and subject matter experts to develop the best courses that we can, and we plan to offer them nationally. They will be eight week online courses. Right now, we're piloting the courses and the program. The program started in 2018. So we're piloting the, the program with a small group of students as we figure out the best way to deliver the courses with the best possible content. We also offer CNA courses and we have a brand new LPN program. The LPN program is starting in a few weeks. In one month we had 400 inquiries for 16 seats for the LPN program. LPNs are employed in local nursing homes. Another new program is a bridge program for service members. We're working on this program, developing it and collaborating with members of the Maine Legislature. We plan to offer a track to RN, becoming an RN, for people who served in the Army, Navy, or Air Force as medics. We're very excited about this new program working with these service members. We've had significant upgrades to the college this year, completely repainting, new flooring, we have new carpets in some of the classrooms, we've built a new simulation lab for maternity, mother and baby classes, and we're in the process of purchasing an anatomage table, a high-tech interactive table that displays anatomy. It will be very useful in anatomy and physiology classes, in our Gen Ed program, in our imaging courses, 
and in our pathophysiology nursing courses. We're very excited about the new anatomage table. Another change to the college, we're completely rebranding our image with new logo, new colors, and new web page. The new web page will be rolled out in a few weeks. We're excited to see the changes. Now I'd like to give you an example of one way that our institution complies with federal requirements. Specifically, I will discuss the Higher Education Opportunity Act of 2008. This act was an update of the Higher Education Act of 1965. The intent of both laws was to provide transparency and support fairness for students and their families related to the costs of higher education. According to our MCHP financial aid specialist, Nicole de Blois, the Higher Education Opportunity Act, Opportunity Act of 2008 is huge in the financial world. It was a big change. One requirement of the 2008 Act is to provide an online, ca um, online calculator of the costs of education. Here you see our current MCHP webpage. I will scroll down and show you right on the home page is the net price calculator. So the student can click on that, type in their personal information, and come up with costs of the college. This net price calculator is available online from the federal government. Our financial aid specialist downloads it, puts in information from the college, and then uploads it to the web page for the students to use. Students click on the calculator to add personal information and the calculator yields an estimated cost for one academic year. The most current version is 2016 to 2017, the most current version available from the federal government. Um, failure to display the calculator could result in a federal fine. Another measure implemented by MCHP to align with the Higher Education Opportunity Act of 2008 is the practice of accepting transfer credits. Most of our students take their general education courses elsewhere and then transfer in and matriculate into either imaging or nursing program. Our registrar staff examine the syllabi and course descriptions to match the students' transfer courses with our MCHP general education courses. Students may also request their transcript if they wish to transfer credits from MCHP to another institution. They may transfer to complete a program or to further their education. The 2008 Higher Education Opportunity Act requires an educational institution to identify and, uh, diploma mills and a diploma mill can be defined as a school that is not universally recognized or a school that claims accreditation um, that is false so uh, it might be a, a false or unrecognized accreditor. A diploma mill may lure prospective customers with displays of fabricated faculty profiles and student testimonials. Diploma mills waste students' time and money, prevent career and educational advancement, and rob students and taxpayers. And the federal government is responsible for researching the um, possibility of a diploma mill. Here is the MCHP web web page that shows our accreditations and as you can see we are accredited by nationally recognized accreditors. So the Accreditation Commission for Education and Nursing also known as ASIN, our nuclear medicine program is accredited. We are approved by the Maine State Board of Nursing we're accredited by the New England Commission of Higher Education, for, formerly known as NEASC, now it's called NICHI. And as noted previously, 
we are pursuing accreditation from CCNE, the Commission on Collegiate Nursing Education. Another requirement of the Act is that a, a college or university displays their program outcomes. Here you can see our MCHP retention rate 60s to 70s, 60 and 60% 60 to um, 80%. Our NCLEX pass rate, first time pass rate, ranging from 81% to 100%, and our employment rates, ranging from 92% to 100%. The concern with a diploma mill is that a student engages in an expensive educational program and yet is unable to um, pass their licensure examination or to gain employment. So that's a reason for displaying these figures on our website. Next, there's a PowerPoint presentation with slides of our current students and our campus. I will provide you with information on the ev evolution of our college with a focus on the curriculum and accreditation. You may click on the CC button to read the captions. Thank you. Welcome to the Maine College of Health Professions. I'm going to show you some slides from our recent past, some photos from our recent past, as I talk about our history. MCHP started in Lewiston, Maine in 1891. The school was associated with a hospital which also opened in 1891. Doctors from the hospital taught the courses, courses in science and pharmacology. A nurse taught the tasks of bedside nursing, and a dietitian instructed the students on how to cook for patients. The students were called probationers at that time, and they were young ladies of good moral character and health between the ages of 22 and 37. By 1908, the probationers were performing all the patient care in the hospital. They had additional duties tending patients in the community. In 1917, the students were paid $8 per month. In 1920, the pay increased to $12 per month. Until 1928, senior students, not teachers, supervised the newer students. In 1928, graduate nurses began to supervise the students. Again, they did not have teachers at their clinicals. Here is a picture of our current campus, our current building, and a photo from a recent graduation. Back to the history. From 1891 until 1920, the students lived in several buildings on the hospital grounds. They shared the beds. The night nurses slept in the beds during the day and switched out with the day nurses sleeping in those same beds at night. In 1920, a nurse's home was constructed, the Wilson Home. The Wilson Home had bedrooms, a reception room, and classrooms. Now, nearly 100 years later, some of the rooms in Wilson Home are still used as dormitory rooms for our nursing students. Here's a photo of some of our recent students in Campus Lab applying personal protective equipment. And, a pl and uh, putting on chocolate pudding and then taking off the personal protective equipment without getting chocolate pudding on their clothes. That's always a fun activity. You can see they are enjoying it. Back to 1916. In 1916, Maine passed a law which required nursing programs to be approved by the state. The Central Maine General Hospital School of Nursing was one of the first in the state to apply for and earn approval. The training school first published a curriculum and a mission statement in 1927. The term probationer was retired at this time, substituting student. The program was extended to 36 months, and students worked 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. with a two-hour break for classes. They were off-duty two afternoons per week. 
In 1936, there was a major revision of the curriculum. The curriculum was adapted to align with the National League for Nursing Education Guidelines and the requirements of New York State. Because of their adherence to New York standards, the graduates were qualified to work in any state in the United States, and the school was accredited by the state of New York in 1938. Around this time, the school established affiliations with the University of Maine, Bates College, and the Concord State Hospital in New Hampshire. University of Maine courses were available to the nursing students. A professor from Bates College tested applicants' psychological aptitude, and students did psychiatric clinicals at the hospital in Concord. Here's one of our recent graduates. She's a nurse at the local hospital and also an adjunct faculty for us. Back to the past. In 1940, the director of nursing of the school requested that blood pressure equipment be provided on each ward of the hospital. Until 1940, there was just one, oh, I, this I have a heart, just one sphygmo manometer in the hospital. It was locked up and used by physicians only. There was another major curriculum revision in 1950, and in 1951 the school was accredited by the nursing, National Nursing Accreditation Service of the National League for Nursing. School leaders faced a financial crisis in 1957. Students no longer provided all the nursing care in the hospital. The facilities required expensive upgrades. The pass rate for the state qualifying examination declined and enrollment was down. There was talk of closing the school. The hospital lost its low paid workforce and balked at the further financial loss related to investing in the school. The director of nursing at that time, Schindel, argued that modern nursing education needed to occur in the classroom, not at the bedside. The hospital did decide to invest and improvements were made to classrooms and the curriculum. The school stayed open. In 1977, the school changed from a diploma granting to a degree granting institution, awarding associate in applied science and nursing degrees to graduates. In 1995, the school moved into a former school warehouse. And I will go back to that just to show you. This is a former shoe warehouse, our current campus. And in 2018, the school added a baccalaureate nursing degree to its offerings. I'm going to go forward again. The students putting on PPE. Here is the hospital campus. We are located a block from the hospital. In the early 2000s, faculty members at MCHP used distance education technology. Synchronous lectures were beamed to four separate locations in the state. That method is no longer used at MCHP, but we do currently use a variety of teaching learning methods, including interactive online lessons. Online education is an amalgamation of distance learning, learning theory, and technology. Online education is emerging, expanding, and evolving, happening now and is expected to continue in the future as we expand our online offerings. Another affiliation of the Central Maine Healthcare family is the Dempsey Center. It's an outpatient support center started by actor Patrick Dempsey and his sister Mary Dempsey. All the services are free, which is a fairly unique model in the country, I believe, and our students are involved in the annual fundraiser, students and faculty and staff, where we go to a local park and cheer people as they cross the finish line after participating in walk, run, or bicycle ride. The local community raises over a million dollars each fall to support the Dempsey Center and its free services, which are available to anyone whose life has been impacted by cancer. Thank you for watching this presentation. I have a little more information for you, prospective faculty member. 
just want to show you a few pictures of Central Maine, where Maine College of Health Professions is located. Here's a map showing Lewiston in the center where the red button indicates, and you can see Boston down in the bottom center. Boston is about two hours from Lewiston. The coast is about a half an hour. Plenty of nice beaches within one hour of Lewiston. And if you proceed north, there are mountains and forests for all kinds of outdoor activities, mountain climbing, skiing, hiking. Here's a photo of Lewiston, Maine, our nationally recognized basilica, city hall, beautiful photo of sunset. As I previously noted, there's skiing nearby. There's a ski mountain right in the Lewiston-Auburn area and several other larger areas about an hour away. Here in Maine, we have plenty of beaches. We have Acadia National Park. We have Katahdin Woods and Waters National Monument. So plenty of places for outdoor activities. We have lighthouses and lobsters. Here's a photo of Portland Headlight. This is one of my favorites because it's close to where one of my sons lives. It's about five minutes away from my son's apartment. So I go here often, it is beautiful. As I noted, we are about two hours from Boston, Massachusetts. So if you like a big city and the culture that it affords, uh, about two hours away and easily accessible by car, bus, or train. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. Again, I'm Professor Meredith Kendall. You may email me at kendallme at mchp.edu or call the college if you have questions or concerns or you want to talk some, to someone about MCHP. Our phone number is 207-795-2840. Welcome to MCHP.